I stand before you tonight in my red star chiffon evening gown. <laughs> face softly made up and my fair hair gently waved, <laughs> the Iron Lady of the Western World. I think as much as you could say of any human being ever, you know, she, she changed the world because she changed the dominant idea. She proved to the world that it was possible to uh, think differently and to uh, to change the assumptions. Margaret Thatcher's legacy is to make this country think of itself as essentially conservative. Uh, it's persuaded an awful lot, a generation of Labour politicians that this is a conservative country. She so terrorised the Labour Party that the legacy was Tony Blair and uh, a, a sort of watered down kind of Thatcherism. Margaret Thatcher wasn't expected to change the world. She struggled to get selected for a winnable parliamentary seat and was initially patronised when she made it to Westminster. Yeah. Your husband's abroad a good deal, I think. Do, will you have to have two different timetables, one for when he's away and one for when he's at home? Well, not quite that. We do most of the domestic things while he's away, you know, any redecoration and so on, so that the oh. household isn't put out mm. uh, when he's at home. But he does travel on export business Comes quite a bit. The Prime Ministerial Rover, bearing now Mrs Thatcher. Thatcher arrived in Downing Street following the winter of discontent, when the unions turned on the Labour government and the post-war consensus seemed in tatters. I think the British people felt that Britain had come to a point of status uh, in which nothing worked. I think the conclusion that they came to is that nothing was working, something has to happen. And I think that they felt that uh, Thatcher was going to make things happen. Where there is discord, may we bring harmony. Where there is error, may we bring truth. Where there is doubt, may we bring faith. And where there is despair, may we bring hope. Thatcher promised and harmony, but went on to govern with iron resolve. The officials in various departments would decide on a Friday evening that if they sent some piece of paper in demanding uh, a, a decision about something, they might be able to get a decision that they wouldn't be able to get if there were a longer period to think about it. Uh, and uh, this was fairly early in my time in number 10, and I wasn't used to this tactic yet. And uh, uh, the, uh, one of the private secretaries presented me with this uh, memorandum from the relevant department, and I looked at it, and it seemed to present two very unappetizing choices, um, one of which seemed to have terrible political consequences, and the other cut right across the strategy. So I... I uh, I sat a long time sort of thinking about this, and eventually I went and found the Prime Minister who was um, busy making scrambled eggs um, for herself and Dennis. And uh, I said, I'm very sorry to disturb you at supper, Prime Minister, but this is uh, completely urgent. Um, we have to give them an answer by tonight. And uh, I really don't have the slightest idea here of the two very unattractive alternatives. And she, uh, first of all, she offered me some scrambled eggs. And then, then she, uh, she said, um, why do they have to decide it by tonight? I said, well, I don't know, Prime Minister, it says they have to decide it by tonight. They're always doing this. Tell them all decided on Monday. Of course, I got back to the department in question. There was no good reason for deciding on Friday night at all. She was absolutely right. She had plenty of time to think about it. And it was that ability not to be driven by the apparent necessities that are imposed on you by the external world, but to decide what you're going to do and how you're going to do it for yourself. We shall not be diverted from our course. To those waiting with bated breath for that favorite media catchphrase, the U-turn, I have only one thing to say. You turn if you want to. <laughs> The ladies not for turning. Thatcher believed Britain needed shock economic therapy. Unemployment reached record levels, while an austerity budget further cut public spending. Unrest turned into violence in the inner cities. Margaret Thatcher was an absolute catastrophe for the social well-being of this country. She split the country right down the middle uh, in a way that it really hadn't been politically in the past. 
the, on social mobility, it slipped right backwards. We'd had since 19, since the beginning of, of uh, since 1900, a story of gradual progress towards the most equal moment we ever were at the end of the 70s. Uh, by then, only one in seven children was poor. By about 1983, one in three children became poor. The sudden eruption of much greater poverty, much greater inequality, from which we've never recovered. Gentlemen, I've just heard that the white flag is flying over Stanley. Yay! Victory in the Falklands resuscitated Thatcher's popularity. She went on to lead the Conservatives to a landslide election victory. With Argentina defeated, Thatcher turned her attention to a new enemy. Of the struggle, of the struggle, where's the of the it was not uh, uh, a gentle, easy progress because we were taking on some enormous uh, vested interests and we were trying to achieve some enormous change. The most fundamental change of all, I suppose, really, was who ran the country. Was it uh, ideologues in the unions or was it uh, the elected government? Miners surged forward against the riot shields. Policemen hit out with truncheons under a barrage of stones and missiles. Mass picketing had turned to rioting. The minor strike was was only in part, as we all knew, about um, uh, the mines. It was in part about who ran the country. So yeah, I'm sure we were very conscious that this was very controversial. The horses galloped in. Privatisation was accelerated, with British Telecom, British Gas, and British Airways all being sold off. Popular capitalism was born. An occasion when I was asked to uh, go down to Chequers to work on a speech, and um, I, uh, I had at that time a small red Volkswagen, uh, and I drove down to uh, to Chequers, and uh, I arrived and parked the small red Volkswagen up the steps uh, on which she was standing, and as I got out, she said, "That is a foreign car." and looked as if I should be so ashamed of myself I should probably curl up and die, at least go away. And I thought to myself, yes, for her this is really something. You know, um, she was utterly determined to support Britain. Of course the chairman or the president of the commission, Mr Delors, said at press conference the other day that he wanted the European Parliament to be the democratic body of the community, he wanted the commission to be the executive and he wanted the Council of Ministers to be the Senate. No! 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 Increasingly opposed to further European integration, Thatcher found herself at odds with many of her cabinet colleagues. The poll tax made her increasingly unpopular with the country at large. Weakened, she was challenged for the leadership. Now she's very pleased that I got more than half the parliamentary party and disappointed that it's not quite enough to win on the first ballot. So I confirm it is my intention to let my name go forward for the second ballot. Undefeated in the first round of voting, she was eventually convinced by her cabinet that she would lose in the second. She stood down and left Downing Street in tears. Ladies and gentlemen, we're leaving Downing Street for the last time after 11 and a half wonderful years and we're very happy that we leave the United Kingdom in a very, very much better state than when we came here 11 and a half years ago. Before Margaret Thatcher came to uh, power, uh, you waited uh, you know, 6, 12, 18 months for a telephone in this country. Uh, you know, she changed that. Um, uh, and that was true through whole swathes of uh, what had become decaying, monopolised, uh, uh, uncompetitive uh, industries that we were trying to turn into uh, modern uh, uh, marketplaces that, that meant that people could actually get what they wanted. Um, and of course that's now become political consensus. Margaret Thatcher's most important influence in some ways uh, was a surprising one. that She was no feminist and she wouldn't allow any interviewers to ask her questions about what it meant being a woman in politics. She certainly promoted no women, was anti-women, and yet as an icon for women, after her nobody could ever say again no woman could. The verdict of history on her will be mixed. I think it will be, yes, she broke the logjam. Yes, 
She made a country that seemed ungovernable, governable. Yes, she did some necessary things and some tough things, but that she failed in persuading the British people that real neoliberalism, real individualism, real self-interest was the way forward.